Hi, this is Carly from In The Loop, and I'm here with Joseph Fan, the 2016 Canadian Junior National Champion and two-time Junior Grand Prix medalist. Hello, Joseph. Hi, Carly. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm great. So, yeah, we're just going to sit down with Joseph and ask him a couple of questions. So, first off, if I read correctly, it's been about a year since your move to the Toronto Cricket Club was announced, correct? Yeah. Do you feel like in the past year, because obviously, like, making a coaching change is a big change. Do you feel like you've grown more accustomed to training and working with the people there and, like, have adapted to the new environment well? Yeah, definitely. I feel like it's been like not that long since I started adapting to the environment. I feel like it took a lot longer than I thought it would mentally, mostly like mentally. Well, actually, when I first moved to Toronto, I was really excited, right? New coaches, new training partners and everything. And I was really excited and I thought it would be fun and I would improve right away. Yeah. And I already had a lot of friends there, so I thought it would be really easy. But when I got there, it was like it was like a shock. Like I actually was I felt really unstable. My jumps during my practices as the days went by, they were not consistent. I was starting to get like mentally scared and like not confident. And yeah, I think that's what happened when I got there. During the season, the competitions really started off really bad. Like my first junior grand prix, if you saw my first junior grand prix last year it was really bad um <laughs> i remember doing like a an okay short my long it wasn't even past 100 points because i literally fell on everything and popped everything i still remember it it was really a down point in my career and yeah as the time passed by i worked a lot mentally with a psychologist and with Brian or Sir and Tracy Wilson, my main coaches, on how to deal with that and how to train and cope with and adapt to my environment and just be able to do it without, even though I'm like I'm like in a new environment, that I'm able to perform. And during the competitions, I really felt that during the Canadians this year, I was able to perform under stress, a lot of stress. And yeah, I feel like It was after Canadians that I adapted really to training in Toronto. Well, that was Mm -hmm. long. (laughs) So are you looking forward to the next season of working under Toronto Cricket Club? Yes, definitely. I feel like this is my year. Yeah, I'm ready for it. That's awesome. So kind of following up, asking about TCC, many people online, like on Twitter, follow lots of TCC skaters. Right. And we see lots of posts about the community there. So would you say it's like a fun community, like that it's a good environment of skaters? Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of different personalities in cricket and it just makes it like a big, fun, nice family. I feel that's how mm-hmm. I feel. Not to not any drama, gossip. Well, actually, mm-hmm. like I'm not a person that really um, am into that kind of thing stuff. So. Even if they have some, I don't really listen to it or anything. So I can't really tell about that. But um, yeah, I love it. I love the environment there. That's awesome. So moving sort of on from TCC. But uh, so going into the season, we are aware of both of your programs. So your short is Torn by Nathan Lanier. Yes. And uh, I read that your free was Emperor Concerto by Beethoven. Yeah. So um, as much as you can... Can you explain to us the process that goes on behind building your programs and how these two came about? Okay, um, so for my short, actually the program David Wilson found it and he wanted one of our one of Brian's skaters to skate on the music Torn Redux because he found it really interesting and he um, yeah he really wanted either for example June or I to skate on it. And I really, really liked the song, the music. So, yeah, I wanted this song. So Brian decided to give it to me. And, yeah, we picked Jeffrey Buttle to choreograph this piece for me. And I also had a lot of experience and, like, programs done with J- Jeffrey Buttle. So 
Um, it was really fun. Yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for the short. Mm-hmm. And for the long, David Wilson found it was my first time working with David Wilson. I was really excited. Um, he found this piece, this piano, uh, this emperor piece of Beethoven. And when he made me listen to it, I was actually really, really nervous because I felt like I wouldn't live up to the ex- like to the song, to the expectation of David because it was my first time working with him, right? So, and he worked with Yuzu and all these great skaters. So, yeah, I told him I was nervous. He's like, you don't have to worry about it. Um, you'll be perfect. You'll be fine. So, yeah, I put my trust in him when he did his program. I really enjoyed working with him, too. I find him, in a way, different from Jeff. David is, I find, like, he he's more fluid in the movements and really creative. And Jeffrey, too. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, we worked on the program for a good a good week. After that, we did some little tweaks and here and there. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So this is your first time working with David Wilson. Yes. So have you only worked with Jeffrey Buttle bet- like before this time? Yeah. Um, yeah. For the last like two years, I guess it was all, it was just Jeffrey Buttle. Okay. Yeah. So were you excited to hear that you would get a different choreographer? Yeah, definitely. Like um, David Wilson, right? Yeah. <laughs> when Brian said I would. Um, work with David Wilson I was really excited I knew it was going to be a great program and the only thing is that I wasn't confident enough to live up to his expectations when we did the program it was it looked really nice and David Wilson was really proud so yeah we look forward to seeing your programs (laughs) yeah so moving on uh talking more about this season and future seasons you talked about how you feel more confident going into this season. So yeah. what what progress would you like to make this season? Progress is, um, first of all, in competitions, I would like to, to feel good on the ice and work every element one at a time when I'm in the program and not feel too stressed about it. Because when I do that, my performances tend to go better. When I start to think too much, that's when everything just falls apart and yeah i worked a lot on that with my psychologist and other progresses in terms of goals um i would like to well medal in my two junior grand prix to be able to go to finals Mm -hmm. and also to go to junior worlds and medal in junior worlds too and now that you're feeling more confident and you know what kind of headspace you need to be in you can go into this year and just make it happen Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So kind of talking about uh, your layouts, uh, I noticed that you've landed a quad less while training. Yeah. Is that something that you would like to train further and incorporate into future layouts? Definitely. I feel like for the moment, I'm just focusing on my programs and and my future competitions. But Mm -hmm. definitely, I think this summer, the next summer, or after my season is done, I'll definitely work on my quad lets again and my quad loop. I've been working oh, yeah. on my quad loop. yeah, I've been working on my quad loop this summer, and it was really, really close. And I think that um, it's either my one, it's either my loop or my lets that I feel like I'm going to have next. This quad sal is giving me a bit of trouble, even though I landed it a couple times. But yeah, quad lets is definitely something that I want to be able to do later on. Awesome. We're excited to see it from you. Thank you. So kind of talking about your like balancing life with figure skating, I read in a previous interview that was released like a while ago that you're balancing school with skating. So is that still going the same for you? Like, is it something you find challenging or are you used to it by now? Um. I mean, balancing school and skating, when I used to be younger, was a lot easier because the courses were a lot easier, too, back then. I feel like now, just the load of the homeworks and just 
what we learn in general in our courses. Like next year, I'm going to take calculus, advanced functions, chemistry, grade 12. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it's going to be a really hard year for me in school. So balancing school and skating, I mentally prepared myself for it. I did a lot of preparation, just like preparing myself schedulely like, and all of that. I actually did bio online this summer. So I know like what we're going to head on to. So yeah, it's mm-hmm. like, I feel like it's going to be a tough year for me, but I'm going to, ha- I'm going to manage. Yeah. Something tough, yeah. but not anything you can't do. Right. Right. And yeah. also I have, I have a friend, Cricket too. She's going to be, be in the same classes as me. So I think that's going to be helpful too. Oh yeah. It's always nice to have friends in classes. Yeah. Yeah. Calculus is a fun time. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm actually not excited at all, but you know. No, don't worry. Speaking as an engineering student, I'm not good at calculus. <laughs> yeah, have a hard time there, but um, yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. So, what are your favorite and least favorite things about your usual day to day training? What I would say is that um, what I love about training at cricket is that the coaches are always there. They're always helping you. I, I really like that they have breaks, like a, a good break between sessions so that I don't burn out. Also, each coach has like a different expertise that really, when it combines together, it really helps each one of us. <laughs> yeah, like you have like Jislaine, the jump coach. Right. Brian, he, he's like technical too. Also, like Brian's like pretty much everything. And Tracy, she's an expert in like edges and and also moral support. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. it's like a very well-rounded environment. Yes, that's why I want. So how do how would you say you motivate yourself on days where you just want to be lazy? Like, how do you find the motivation to go to training? The competitions, like looking at forward for the competitions, you know, I just want to really do well there this year. And I think that that is really a motivator for me and to work hard every day, even though some days I just feel like, you know, like, like, like crap. I just know that I'll get through it. And those are the days that I really need to push through Mm -hmm. so that in the future, when I feel like that, I could still be able to push through and if in in competition if I feel like that too I'll be able to to be able to still perform well and you know there's really strong competitors this year I'm sure and I just want to show what I'm able capable of doing and um, yeah that's that's it so you really just want to you know show what your training is going for like you know what you're working towards right So who are kind of connected to, you know, motivating yourself? Like, who are your role models in figure skating? Definitely Yuzu. Even before I came to cricket, um, I definitely looked up to him. Just watching him skate on TV at the Olympics. I remember the 2018 Olympics. I heard that he got injured and he wasn't able to train much before the olympics and i feel like it was his fierceness and his commitment that really showed during the olympics and yeah i feel like that's such an inspiration for every one of us and yeah also i I just love his jumps they're like textbook and skating his determination you can see it in his eyes when he performed even now when I train besides him, like I just have a greater respect when I watch him train. So sort of training with him and moving to the place that he trains just made you gain more respect for him. Right. And also even motivation, right? Mm-hmm. When I see him land quads, it just gives me motivation, I guess, and excitement. Like, I'm like, wow, that was so nice. I mean, like, let's like, I can do that, too. It just gives me a hope, you know? Yeah. So then kind of a question we wanted to ask would be like, 
if you could have the skills of any figure skater in the world, who would it be? Do you think it would be Yuzu? Yeah, yeah, definitely. But I mean, also Patrick Chan. Like I looked up to him before I knew Yuzu. I looked up to Patrick a lot when I was younger. And just his skating skills. I just really would love to be at that level one day, skating wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Patrick Chan's skating skills are way up there. Yes. So, are your programs this season styles that you haven't really challenged yet before? In the past, I have done classical music before. So, my long, The Emperor, it's sort of a classical music too, right? And. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the movements and how I perform it is more different than what I'm used to do before. And I feel also feel like this year, I really improved in my skating skills and my performances. And yeah, so yeah, I feel really comfortable doing it. And for my short, I could say that is pretty different from what I used to do before. I remember last year I did my short was a really dramatic pop song. And that was out of my comfort zone, definitely. And this year, I feel like it's a bit out of my comfort zone too, but I feel comfortable doing it at the same time. It's a mix. So it's like you're, it's kind of like you're challenging yourself to a new style? Yes. Kind of following up to that, is there a genre or style of program that you would like to try? Right now, I can't really think of one, to be honest. Yeah, maybe I always wanted to... Um, I do an instrumental of a song, a really popular song, mm -hmm. or or also like a, you know, anime, anime. Yeah. yeah, the soundtracks are sometimes, I really enjoy listening to soundtracks of anime sometimes, and some I found, I find really good. We'll see, but um, yeah, I would love to skate on an anime soundtrack, <laughs> the emotional type ones. So would you say you kind of enjoy, do you enjoy more watching more emotional or classical programs? Yeah, I feel like that's, that's my style of skating. So it's more of like your comfort zone, but you can still challenge yourself within that. Yeah, yeah. So one of our final questions, uh, this is a question that our team wanted to ask you. A lot of our team and a lot of figure skating fans that we know are also K-pop fans, which we know you're a K-pop fan. Well, how do you know? <laughs> uh, it was in yeah. one of your... Um, yeah. So mm -hmm. we wanted to know uh, what some of your favorite songs were right now and if you're learning any new dances. Okay, let me think. Um, you know, every, every new K-pop song that comes out, every comeback, I always watch it. Mm -hmm. When it's like boy groups or girl groups. And <laughs> I always enjoy all their... Most of the music, you know, like I really enjoy listening to BTS, mm -hmm. um, CLC, Everglow's new music called like Adios or something like that. Yeah. Not long ago, June, June and I were listening to Chung Ha's single called Snapping. And mm -hmm. yeah, we were digging it. And uh, June learned the choreo of it. I sort of learned it, too. It was fun. That's awesome. Yeah. K-pop dances are so energetic and they're so demanding. Yeah, they are. And when you do it alone, it's fine. But when they're all in, when you watch them, they're always all in sync and it's just amazing to watch. Yeah, I am always very impressed by K-pop choreography. Yeah, yeah. Would you ever be interested in doing a program to a K-pop song, like an exhibition? Oh, yeah, definitely. At one point, I'll definitely do one. I'm sure of it. <laughs> yeah, something like, uh, did you see uh, Misha G did a program to a BTS song at the Olympics? Yes, Mic Drop, BTS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was awesome. I really enjoy those. And mm -hmm. I and I know a lot of figure skating fans who are K-pop fans who enjoy this. So we're looking forward to one from you. Yeah, okay. I'll prepare that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So our final question, if you could let the figure skating fan community know one thing about you, what would it be? Oh, I don't know. I really love um, my dogs. <laughs> <laughs> They're right here with me right now on my bed. Um, Aww. And yeah, um, I really love my dogs. They Let's just say that they're also one of my motivators <laughs> to continue skating. And I don't know. They're just like 
moral support for me and I'm really thankful to have them in my life. I'm very thankful for my dog. Yeah, me too. So thank you so much, Joseph, for sitting down with us. Uh, You guys, the listeners, can watch Joseph uh, this upcoming weekend at Junior Grand Prix Riga. Uh, The schedule will be posted on our Twitter at In The Low Podcast uh, pretty soon. Stay tuned for our episode on the first two Junior Grand Prix, which will be released Wednesday. Thank you for listening.